Here's a third example of price elasticity of demand. So what we want to look at is what happens when we change from going from point A to point B and point B to point A. So remember that our equation for elasticity of demand is equal to the percentage change in quantity being driven by a percentage change in price. Well, what we showed in previous examples is that if I go from point A to point B, my elasticity of demand is two. But if I go from point B to point A, now my elasticity of demand is 0.5 or 1 half. And so some might argue that going from A to B to B to A should not depend, should not be different. And so to account for this, the method that can be used is the midpoint method to estimate elasticity of demand. And this tells us that the percentage change in quantity is still Q2 minus Q1, but instead of using the starting point of quantity, we're going to use the midpoint, which is Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. And for price, we still have P2 minus P1, but as we divide it, we're not going to divide it by the initial price, but rather the midpoint of the two prices, which is P1 plus P2 divided by 2. Now this is like inception, a division within a division within a division, things get kind of crazy, buildings tip over, but we can handle that because it's a lot more intuitive than we might think. All right, so let's look at this example. All right, so we want to calculate this. So first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the midpoint between PA and PB. So we here we define the midpoint, this point right here in the middle, it's P1 plus P2 divided by 2. That's what this is right here. So I take 50, I add 25, so I get 75 divided by 2. So the midpoint here is 37.5. To find the midpoint of the quantity, it's Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. And so I get 225 divided by 2, which is 112.5. And that's this number right here. So now when I calculate my elasticity of demand using the midpoint method, I'll get Q2 minus Q1. So let's assume we're going from A to B. So in that case, Q2 would be 150 minus Q1, which is 75, divided by 112.5, because that's Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2, or the midpoint between the two. Divide that by P2, which is 25 minus 50, divided by 37.5. So here I get 75 divided by 112.5, or about a 60.67% change in quantity, divided by 25 divided by 37.5, or about a 0.67% change in price. And so this tells me that my elasticity of demand is equal to negative 1 in this class. We'll just call that, and using this book, we'll just call that 1. And now the, what, the reason why the midpoint method is so nice is this is what's going from point A to point B. Now if I want to find the, midpoint, the elasticity of demand from going from point B to point A, it's the exact same equation. Because Q1 plus Q2 doesn't change. So 112.5 will stay the same. And all that's going to switch are these two numbers. So it's now going to be 75 minus 150, which is still 75 divided by 112.5. It's just negative 0.67. The bottom, P1 plus P2 stays the same, 37.5. And now just those two switch. So we get 50 minus 25. That number is positive. The overall number is negative, And it gives us the exact same answer. So that's one of the strengths of using the midpoint method to calculate the elasticity of demand, is it doesn't matter if you go from A to B or B to A, you get the exact same answer. In this case, it's one. And if we compare that to our previous answers, going from B to A, we got 0.5, A to B, we got two. And what we'll find is that midpoint method is the elasticity of demand about the midpoint of the other methods using from A to B to B to A.